On September 23rd, I released a YouTube video about doing some basic pocket knife maintenance. Disassembling the knife, cleaning it, lubricating it, and just getting it to work better. On October 22nd, I released a podcast about a website that I had heard about called Notebook LM. Now, this is a Google-based website, and it's designed to be a research-slash-note-taking website. And I think the general concept is that you can compile different sources of information, and it will generate you know, high-level overviews. One of the things that we'll even do is it'll let you copy and paste a YouTube URL and it will generate an audio transcript of essentially like a podcast about that YouTube video. Now, at first I was slightly skeptical, but I thought I wanted to give it a try. So I took that video that I made about cleaning that knife on September 23rd, I pasted it into Notebook LM, and within less than a minute, it generated just over eight minutes of audio content a podcast, two people talking about my YouTube video. Now, obviously just pure audio content is difficult to share here on YouTube, so I have taken some clips of that original video and just kind of overlaid it on top of the audio. Uh, have a listen to this, let me know what you think. Also, if you prefer just to listen to the purely podcast version, I'll have a link to that in the description below. And if you have a chance to listen to this with headphones, I would highly recommend it. You know, there's little nuances and inflection in the voices. And it actually makes me, it almost makes it believable. There are, however, some places where it's like, okay, there's a little glitch, just a, a little bit too quick with a, mm, yeah, mm, that stuff, but it's weird. There's also one part that got very, very wrong, and I'll point that out in the video. Welcome in. Today, uh, we're diving into something I think we all kind of experience, but don't really think that much about. Okay. And that is pocket knife care. Right. Um, you've brought us this YouTube video, and it is by Simple Little Life, and it's all about cleaning this Benchmade Griptilian. Yes. And I'm telling you, this guy's passion for cleaning this knife is really kind of infectious. It's true. It's uh, It really is. It's more than just cleaning, though, wouldn't you say? It's yeah. like unlocking this appreciation for the tool yes. that we use every single day. Yes. And he starts off by saying, well, it's a rainy day. Perfect for some knife maintenance. Right. I don't know about you, but that's not my idea of a great rainy day activity. Yeah. But he's so excited about it, you can't help but get excited with him. Yeah. Um, he actually addresses some comments about people mistaking this knife for another brand, and it seems like these knife people are very detail-oriented. Well, yeah. This is where we start to see how deeply people connect with their tools. Yes. Even if it's something as, you know, seemingly simple as a pocket knife. Like, remember that thing we talked about? Uh -huh. About our belongings becoming artifacts of our lives. Oh, totally. It's like when you find an old coat and there's a crumpled up bus ticket yes. in the pocket. You're right back there. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what I love about this video is that it really does kind of capture that in a way. The YouTuber zooms in on all the grime hidden inside the knife. Oh, yeah. Like the lint, the metal shavings, all that stuff. It's you know, a little you. <laughs> but it also makes you realize just how much our belongings silently collect those traces of our experiences. Yeah, and he doesn't, like you said, he doesn't just gloss over it. He right. gets in there, he shows you all the little bits and pieces. But the fascinating thing to me is his reasoning for cleaning it. He's not just doing it for the aesthetic. He's doing it because all that grime is really affecting the nice functionality. Mm. He actually mentions that the action is not as snappy as it should be because of the dust and the lint that's built up inside. Yeah, and it's a good reminder for any tool, you know, whether it's a knife or a car or even your computer, yeah. that regular maintenance is just so crucial. It is. You know, we often focus on does it work or does it not work? Right. But it's those little things like the cleaning and the care that keeps things running smoothly. For sure. And he really breaks down this cleaning process in a way that's so relatable and informative. Yeah. I mean, he's using simple cleaning agents that most people just have around the house. Acetone soap. You don't need anything special. Right. And he really emphasizes that. Yeah. Which I think is great. And he is not afraid to get his hands dirty. Like, literally, he disassembles this entire knife. And I'm not going to lie, it looked kind of intimidating at first. Right. But he walks you through it step by step. Yeah, it's like he demystifies the process completely. Yeah. And he even addresses, like, the fear that some people might have of, like, messing things up. Yeah. And he's like, no, 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 it's way easier than it looks. Right. And this is where that aha 
moment you were talking about comes in. Yes. Because he gets this look of pure joy on his face when he sees the internal mechanism of that axis lock for the first time. So I'm going to interrupt right here. This is the part that they got wrong. I didn't show my face during this part of the video at all. Uh, I was excited and they obviously picked that up in the tonality of my voice. Uh, but he says you could see his face light up. That doesn't happen in the original video. Yeah, even though he's owned the knife for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? It's great. It's like that satisfaction of understanding like how things work. Yeah. Even on like that really basic mechanical level. It's like peeking behind the curtain. It is. And yeah. gaining this whole new appreciation for like the design and the engineering that goes into these like everyday objects. Remember that time we took apart that old radio? Oh, yeah. Just to see how it worked. Of course I do. How could I forget that? I mean, we huh? spent hours trying to figure out how all those tubes and wires all work together. And we did not become expert radio technicians no. overnight. No, we did not. But there was something so satisfying about taking it apart. Yes. Seeing all the parts. Right. And then putting it back together. I know. And that's what I love about this video. It captures that same feeling. Yeah. And it goes back to something else that we were talking about. That slowing down and engaging with the objects in our lives. Okay. You know, we live in a world of instant gratification. Right. Where things are just disposable. Yeah. Use it, toss it out. Yeah. But this is like taking a step back and appreciating the craftsmanship. Yeah. Even in these like really, really utilitarian objects. You're right. And he even like arranges all the disassembled parts for the thumbnail. I know. So he's turning it into art. Exactly. It's like finding beauty in the most unexpected places. Yeah. I love that. And you know, that appreciation for detail, it even extends to the cleaning process. Yes. He meticulously cleans every single nook and cranny. Oh, Even yeah. The tiny screws, the springs, oh, yeah. everything. I could see the difference oh, like, between the dirty part and the clean part. Totally. It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing what a little soap and elbow grease can do. Right. And then he gets into this, and this is so funny to me because I did not know about this debate. Okay. But he brings up whether or not to oil the bearings. Oh, yeah. And apparently there are very strong opinions on both sides of that. There are. Mm hmm you would think that there's like a right answer. Right. But it seems like there's really not. He's like, I'm walking into a minefield here. Right. But I'm going to tell you what I do. And he uses just a tiny little bit of oil. Yeah. And then he's like, but that's my preference. Right. You do you. You do you. You might not want to do that. You do what you got to do. And I love that he does that because yeah. it shows that even in something like this. Totally. This little niche hobby huh. that there's room for your own way of doing things. Absolutely. I love that. Ah. And speaking of doing things in your own way, he brings up this whole concept of thread locker. Oh, yeah. Which is something that honestly I had never even heard of. Neither. Before watching this video. Yeah. And he explains that it's basically used to prevent screws from coming loose. Okay. Which is essential for something like a pocket knife that's constantly being opened and closed and, you know, put through the ringer. It's like next level. Yeah, yeah I never would have thought about that. I know. Like, oh yeah, I need to make sure those screws don't come loose. Right. But it makes perfect sense. But they do. Like, duh. Yeah, of course. With the wear and tear. Yeah, like those are the things I would never think about. Right. But of course it makes sense. Totally. It makes perfect sense. And, you know, he doesn't just mention thread locker. He gets into the different types. Oh, we're safe. Like the permanent versus the removable. And, you know, he really emphasizes like choosing the right one for the job. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of the time I tried to fix my glasses with super glue. Oh, no. Yeah. It did not end well. Oh, no. Let's just say that not all adhesives are created equal. Yeah. But you know what I appreciate about this is that he doesn't shy away from like these potentially confusing details. Right. Like he explains it in a way that makes sense. Yeah. Even if you're like brand new to this whole world of knives. Yeah. And he throws in these little pro tips like okay. using a hobby paintbrush to apply the thread locker okay. just the right amount. It's those little touches. Yeah. It's those little touches yeah. that make you realize like this guy really knows his stuff. He's not messing around. Yeah. He's not messing around. Yeah. He loves it. He's not just going through the motions. Yeah. And speaking of not messing around, he doesn't stop at just cleaning and reassembling. Right. He gets out his sharpening system. Of course. And gives this a final sharpen. Why wouldn't you? Because maintenance is ongoing. Exactly. It's that commitment yeah. to keeping things in tip-top shape. Yeah. You know, respecting the tools that we rely on. Yes. And it's not just about the functionality either. 
It's like you were saying. Yeah. It's about taking pride in what we own. Yeah. Appreciating the craftsmanship. And encouraging viewers to try it themselves. Yeah, He's yeah. like, this is a fun little hobby. He makes it look like so much fun. He does. And there is something so satisfying I'm... about taking something apart. Yeah. Cleaning it. Right. Putting it back together. I know. You feel like you've really accomplished something. You do. It's like that feeling you get after like a really good spring cleaning. Oh, yeah. You know, where everything just feels so much fresher and more organized. Yes. It's so true. It's so true. It's those simple pleasures. Yeah. It's those moments of quiet satisfaction yeah. that you get from a job well done. So the next time you reach for your everyday carry, yeah. whether it's a pocket knife or your favorite pen, right? maybe even your phone, Yeah. take a moment, appreciate it. Yeah. Maybe give it a little bit of love. Absolutely. Well, if you've watched to this point, congratulations. What are your thoughts on that? You know, today is January 1st, 2025. And whenever we begin a new year, we always kind of look to the future, you know, future plans, goals, dreams, ideas. I always like to think about new cameras and technology coming out. AI is one thing that I have not given a lot of thought to. This is actually the very first time I've ever used any form of AI like knowingly. I mean, I know there's certain apps that are automatically built into it in your phone or whatever, but you know, I've never gone to like ChatGPT. I've, I've never done anything like that. And for this being my very first experience with AI, it is mildly terrifying. It almost sounds like, like a real conversation. And you know, AI is getting so good at image generation, even video generation, and as you just heard, audio generation. I think it's important that we realize that we, the people, the inhabitants of Earth, we need to stay informed of these things, and we also need to make sure that it's not just big companies that are kind of doing whatever it is that they want to do, and we're left to suffer. You know, one thing that bothers me is I look up in the night sky, and there's all these satellites just whizzing around. Why weren't we asked about that? Now, I'm not afraid of AI, but I think that if we're not careful with this and if we don't kind of put our foot down a little bit and say, hey, 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 I mean, who's controlling this stuff? I don't know. And the flip side of that, I also have this thought that I should be learning how to use AI to do the mundane, boring tasks that would free up my time to doing the things that make me, me. And I truly hope this might just be optimistic thinking, but I hope that there is no chance that AI I don't believe it. I don't believe there's a chance that AI could ever truly do and bring to the table the things that make a human being a human being, the human touch. I hope AI will never get to that point. When I listen to this audio, yes, it's mildly impressive. I'm like, hey, cool. But I can hear it and I'm like, yeah, that's not a real person. So it brings me a little sense of relief, but also <laughs> I had no clue it was this good. Anyways, what are your thoughts? I'd love to hear down in the comment section below. And again, I've got those links to the video about the sharpening and then that podcast if you're interested in that. First day of 2025, folks. I'm excited. It's going to be a great year. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Cheers.